What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris, man. We are here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Monday, October 7th. Uh, my name is Chris Drummond. I'm a freelance uh, reporter based out of Minnesota here. Uh, I also work in sales, um, and I'm also a proprietor of this podcast where I bring individuals on to talk about their why and why they do what they do and who they are outside of their occupation. I got a special guest that's going to be coming on with me today. His name is David Butler. He is a digital video content associate at ESPN, has been so for the past three plus years. He also spent some time at ABC 13 in Houston, which is one of my favorite cities in the world. So we'll definitely talk to him about that. We're going to get to talk to him about his why, why he wanted to be in sports. Uh, we're going to talk to him about some favorite things, have interaction, a uh, game that we're going to play. But just get to know him a little bit. So without any further ado, I introduce to you my man, David Buck. What's going on, David? How we doing? What's happening, man? What's happening? Thank you so much for having me, man. No, no question. Thank you. Uh, I'm just glad we was able to get up with each other. My apologies for that. That's my fault. Um, but I'm happy to see you. I see you rocking a Dallas jersey after the victory that they had yesterday. I get it. I get it. I feel you on that. Gotta be there. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on here, bro. Um, I want to ask you, how's your week uh, starting off so far? No, nah, it's starting off pretty good. Uh, I think you know, working at ESPN, a lot of people know sports happen on the weekends. So my schedule has never been like anybody else, I would say, around the world. Because I'm never off on the weekends. That never happens. So usually my off days are like during the week day. And so mm -hmm. I, my days start, like my week starts at different periods. So let me see. I think I started, my week started on Saturday. So today my Wednesday. <laughs> So okay. it's been going pretty good, though, man. Some good college football over the weekend, some good NFL games. Um, so we're probably going to have some good Monday night games tonight as well. I, if I'm not going to say, we might have two. I know we've been having a lot of double hitters on Monday night football lately. So looking forward to that. I always enjoy Monday night football. And then I just came off a dub. So I'm feeling good. <laughs> I know you football. feeling good, man. And no Demarcus Lawrence, no Micah Parsons. And they still go on the road against a very tough Steeler defense to get it done. I definitely watched that, that's for sure. Uh, I want to reiterate to you, David, why I wanted to have you on here, and that's because I know you're a digital content uh, uh, associate, yeah. a video associate, I should say, at ESPN. You've been there for the past three years doing your thing. I know you was at ABC 13 Houston prior to going to ESPN as well. I'm somebody who is a sports reporter. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm on the freelance side now, but I was with two different publications, a combination of Atlanta, Georgia, okay. and now here. Uh, in Minnesota, I've been doing this for the past six years. And I just, wow. uh, well, as far as reporting goes, and I wanted to start this podcast to be able to network with great people like yourself who's mm -hmm. in sports and tell their story. We don't get a chance a lot to sit down and tell our stories, man, because we're always working. Like you said, you're working on the weekends. You're always working in sports. You don't get a yeah. chance to sit down and do this and break bread and be able to tell your story about how you got to it. So I wanted right. to do that. And, again, I thank you for coming on for sure. No, I, I appreciate you for giving everyone a voice who works in this industry. Because like you said, we you know, we always work and we always, our job is to please, you know, the consumer. And so we never really have time for ourselves and, and to express, you know, how our journey got to where we are in life. So I appreciate you for this platform, man. Thank you. No doubt. And no doubt. And I always start the same way. The first question is, what is your why? Why okay. do you do what you do? Uh, did you have any role models growing up? Did you have any inspirations growing up? I know me personally, I played sports in high school growing up. And, you know, as a little kid, I always wanted to be in sports. Maybe mm -hmm. that might be the same story with you. But tell me, what is your why of why you do what you do in the sports industry? Solid. So as as yourself, coming out of high school, I won a state championship uh, in track in Texas. And I, I played baseball, I played football. So going into college, I thought that I was going to be an athlete. Things didn't turn out that way. And so I just kind of I turned to who I am as a person. I've never been a shy person, never been a person who was very that was scared to be in front of the camera. Um, and also, I, I always loved to write. That was always a talent of mine that I've always had. So I was like, all right, let's combine the two. We love sports. We love writing. 
let's create a show. And so okay. I, created, I created my own sports show freshman year in my dorm room with uh, a camera that wasn't 4K and just a notepad. And I would <laughs> I would memorize, I would write my script, memorize and shoot it. And I'll do at least, I don't know how many, how many shots I would do, but I, I did that for the whole first year of college. And then my show was picked up by the university television station. From mm. then on, I had my show on TV and then I had my radio show. My It was an afternoon radio show on campus. So I had two shows by, I think, sophomore year. And I was a, okay. sports, I was a sports editor for the newspaper. So I had all, all those things, any type of media at the university, at Texas Southern University, I, I touched every aspect of it by that point, by the time my junior year came around. So I knew that was something that I was really passionate about. Um, it wasn't until my internship with ABC 13 that really turned that passion, I feel like, into a purpose. Mm. Because right. again, at ABC, it opened my eyes to the different opportunities that our field really can give us because you don't have to always be on camera. And that was what I learned immediately when I got to ABC. So in my tenure at ABC, for, I was there for a year and a half. I was in the sports department, marketing, sales, community outreach. Uh, okay. Anything I think of, I put my hands in it because I always just wanted to be that person that was known to not only be an asset to my department, but an asset to the whole station. And I really took I really took a heave of that and made sure that I didn't take the opportunity for granted. And it was a uh, like if you go back to my LinkedIn, my header, this is what really changed it for me. I think this is what really cultivated my why. My header is a picture of me. I was interviewing a young woman who was on a she was on a show on Disney Channel. And okay. thing about reading books and they I didn't know they were going to show it to the students around Houston ISD. And so they showed the interview to some kids in a classroom, man, and it's a screenshot of me talking, and it's a bunch of kids looking at the board, and I'm on the board. And, mm. man, uh, and I'm not going to lie to you, I think it made me cry. And it's been such an impact on my life because I think that symbolized the reason why I go so hard. Like, I, I want to succeed for myself, yes, but... I want to succeed for the kids that look like me. And I think that's what really did it for me when I saw the picture. It was like a lot of kids, a lot of minority kids, Hispanic kids, black mm -hmm. kids. And I was like, bro, this is the reason why I want to succeed for myself. So they can see, oh, okay, since you did it, I can too. That was always, that was the start for me. That's what really changed it to a purpose. And I have a lot of nieces and nephews. I'm my only child, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews, a lot of younger cousins that's coming up. Uh, and I have two godsons now. So that that gave me even more of a reason to continue mm -hmm. my own success, and I'm the first person. Like that. Leave, I'm the first person to leave Texas and my family to pursue my my career, and so that also puts another you know purpose and another why on me as well because I, I want my little cousins, and I, I just had some little cousins that just graduated from Fairview A and M University. Mm -hmm. That that really means a lot to me because they look up to me and they tell me that when they tell me that, that it really hit home because sometimes you know. You might think people look up to you really never know until they reach out and say, hey, I've been watching you for some time. Even Without people that, you know, that's not in my family, they've reached out to me. People on LinkedIn, LinkedIn reach out to me. Uh, I do a lot of work with Disney on the yard, and I do a lot of work with Disney talent acquisition team. Uh, and I, I've been an advocate on behalf of the Walt Disney Company for about a year and a half now. And mm -hmm. I really enjoy the work that I do uh in that aspect because it's about uh giving back it's about you know paying it forward it was a lot of people that helped me on my journey to success man and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the people who helped me and so I always just like to give back. I always like to give the inspiration and speak life into the next generation and it doesn't have to be a kid that's into journalism whatever you want to be I want to be a person that can use my life experiences to help you I don't never tell a kid or a student, anything that I haven't been through. And so that's that's been the biggest thing for me. And I think that just ties into my why, because everything that I go through and as I continue to succeed and, and climb my own ladder, I'm I'm teaching myself lessons and I'm going through things so I can grow. So when it's time for me to give somebody else advice, I've already been through it. So now I can give you the advice. And so that, right. that's been my why recently, man. And well, not even say recently, I guess this college is just, to make sure that, you know, I continue to succeed so they can see success and they can talk to success, success. because, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they aren't uh, available to speak to a lot of children and stuff like that. And I tell kids all the time, and look, contact people. If they contact you back, 
they contact you back. If they don't, they don't. Continue to right. reach out. Like, it's okay if you get a no. It's one step closer to your yes. It's all right. And that was my mindset when I was younger. So um, just to be a person that they can come to and mm -hmm. people can look up to. And I'm, I'm a very religious person, man, a man of God. And for me, I think he's transitioned my life into, into seeing now that I'm I'm a leader. And sometimes you don't even ask to be a leader. Sometimes it's just right. bestowed upon you. And so right. I've really been, I've really taken that role very seriously. And I really enjoy giving back and, and make sure the kids have some type of inspiration, some type of person they can come to, they can talk to and be themselves, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, and it's a comfortability level. And I really appreciate that. So I, I would say with my wise man, just to continue to succeed for myself. So, you know, whatever I go through, you know, I can give lessons to the younger generation for sure. Absolutely. Uh, no question about it. You know, it's, you know, joining this industry, David, uh, before I get to the next question, uh, my why was simply to be a voice for the voiceless as well, right? Yeah. Be an advocate, right? Be a pillar in the community, uh, mm -hmm. being able to story tell, tell different kind of stories, and but also pay it forward. Like you said, you know, there's a lot of high schoolers that, that came up to me when I was working full time in the publications and college people like, well, what do you like about journalism? Well, I like the fact that you do something every single day different. I right. uh, like the fact that you're able to tell story, tell stories that nobody's ever told. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the fact that talking to guys like yourself. Right. Um, but the main thing is, is that when I tell kids about journalism, it's like, I want you to try everything. Yeah. I want yeah. you to try everything, try stuff that, you know, you feel like you would love to do, but try stuff that you feel like that, you know, you so, so on and try even new stuff because mm -hmm. that's how you learn and be a jack of all trades, but also learn what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Uh, I love the fact you want to pay it forward to the kids. I really do. There's nothing better in my mind than driving down the street or going to a grocery store and people acknowledge the work that you're doing in the mm -hmm. community. Uh, it's a beautiful feeling. And I've certainly had that here in uh, Minnesota and look forward to wherever my next journey is, continue that on as well as you do. Now, great segue, though. Because you mm -hmm. mentioned Texas. You mm -hmm. went to Texas Southern University, same college that Michael Strahan went to. Absolutely. Uh, no question about it. And I have some ties in Texas, too, because I have a brother that lives there. I'm definitely down in Houston. Houston, y'all know what y'all is. Y'all for real. Now. <laughs> ain't, ain't no question. The 832 is something different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> down right, there, ain't yeah. no question. <laughs> okay. Are y'all 832-713, right? 713. I'm from Dallas, though. I'm from, oh, from school, so I'm from 214, 972, okay. 469. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So you better, okay, I got you. Arlington, Dallas area. I got you on that. Okay, yeah. here we go. So tell me, were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to Texas Southern University? Um to be honest with you, my like, so I was slightly recruited by TSU when I was running track. And so that piqued the interest. I also had family in Houston. And so okay. it was always like, a, all right, like I applied to a few universities and I didn't, I didn't go on too many visits, quite frankly. And I knew TSU wasn't like, so it wasn't very far, but it was far enough from home. And I also had family out there as well. So I knew it was like a second home to, for me. So it was somewhere comfortable as well. So it wasn't like, I wouldn't say another school that probably could persuade me because I was already looking at TSU because I had family out there anyways. Mm. And, then, and so, yeah, that's kind of how that went. But I will say that, like, going to HBCU for sure, I would always advocate for that. Any, you know, brown skin, dark, black, Hispanic, whatever the case may be, I would never change ever in life my experience about going to HBCU. That's the best right. thing that probably could ever happen. Like, that experience... It's so different from what a kid would experience at any type of university, man. Oh, I, oh, I know. Yeah, I would never. Oh, I definitely life, know. I would never in my life change the fact that I went to Texas Southern University. Never, never. Okay, yeah. okay. It, it taught now, you. It teaches you a lot of things. Uh, Bobby, I ain't cut you off because. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm thinking about it because someone asked me, um, you know, what did going to HBCU, you know, help as far as you know you going into your career now. And I said, the biggest thing, man, is getting through adversity. Like that that perseverance is a different breed when you're at, at an HBCU because sometimes you might not have 
the um, state of the art equipment the other universities right. might have. So you got to not resources. You got to know how to get it done with what you have. You have right. to. That's right. survival, that survival mode is a different type of mode when you were at HBCU. That's probably why, you know, when I got to uh, ABC 13, why I was so successful because my drive was just different. That drive mm -hmm. coming out of HBCU, you already, you know, you're already an African-American, so you feel like you, you know, you got eyes Absolutely. behind the eight ball. So that drive is a different breed when you're coming from HBCU because you really got that hunger, though. It really drives you to be hungrier than a lot of your opponents or or people around you that's trying to get to the same place. Because in my mindset, and it's still my mindset, and I tell my my mentees this all the time, it's like, all right, you know, you want to work as hard as you can because you would hate to see somebody eat off your plate. You would hate to see it. Because I'm not eating, I'm not letting nobody eat off my plate. That was, that's been my okay. mindset since I, was, since I was in college. You're not eating right. off my plate. Because I done worked hard to get here. So now mm -hmm. that I'm here, I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat. So okay. that's been my mind since I was in school, man. But I think going to HBCU really like cultivates that mindset and that hunger to succeed for real, though. You dropping bars on here, David. Yeah. Okay, I feel you on that, baby. <laughs> feel, listen, listen uh, I'm I'm with you on HBCUs now. Now I went to college at Kennesaw State University, which okay. is in Georgia. But best believe I know about Morehouse and Spelman and Morris mm -hmm. Brown College. Best mm -hmm. believe, ain't no question about that. They had some interesting things going on over there. <laughs> it was over there. <laughs> That's for sure. No question. Now, I want to ask you some favorite questions. Okay. You just give me the 411 off the rip based upon these favorite questions. Are you with me? I got you. All right, here we go. Favorite meal you like to cook? Mm, I would say... Right now, that's a that's a that's a solid question because I'm 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 into cooking a little bit more different thing, a little bit more healthier right now. I would say my favorite thing is probably my honey glazed lemon zested salmon with on a bed of cheesy mashed potatoes, uh, and around that. Something I'm I'm not gonna lie to you, I really love like to put a good plate together. So it'll be around the mashed potatoes, it'll probably be some um some mixed vegetables. So yeah, okay. that's probably my favorite one. Outside of that, for sure, some wings. I can I can cook at least like five different flavors of wings, and I think they taste better than a lot of wing spots out here. <laughs> okay, now now listen, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna cap to you. I'm not much of a cook, but I'm a grill. I do know how I, to grill. Yeah. If I, I if I had a pit out here, mm -hmm. I would not believe it. Cause when I was back home, I was. Yeah. Like, I'm not when I was back home, man. I'm I'm not Dave. I'm not David when I get on that grill. When I'm on that grill, I'm unk. I'm unk. <laughs> get on that okay. grill, I'm unk. We got the we got the apron on, we got the head to the back, man. We got the slides, no socks. You gotta have that. You got, right, you got right. The going over the shoulder. Okay. Yeah, yeah. With the slow jams oh. on. Good vibes. Oh. I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Now listen, if I I definitely will want to take an ESPN tour soon. Now, if I'm out there while you out there, I, I gotta pull up. That's all I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Okay, okay. Say less. So here we go. Next question is mm -hmm. which concert? Or what, what? What was your favorite concert that you ever attended? Easy. It was Gunna and uh, Young Nudie. They came to uh, I think it was 2018, 2018 and twenty nineteen TSU Homecoming. Okay. For the best concert I've ever been to in my life. I myself, I started three mosh pits. It was a ball. <laughs> we had a time. It was a time. Yeah, we had a, we had a blast at the concert, man. Gunner came out, okay. man. Had everybody having a good time. Young Nudie had it, had it rocking. So it was a good. It was definitely one for the books. Like I think since then, they haven't touched that that type of magnitude because that was a crazy lineup that we had that year. I got you, Gunner. I love me some Gunner. Love me some. You know what? I love that. Um, one of my favorite albums is Gunner and Little Babies. When mm -hmm. they did one of the album together, that's what I like. It was I that like year. that. It was that same year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no doubt. Because they had one of uh, the they had a song with Drake, "Never mm -hmm. Recover." You remember that? Okay, got you. Yeah, I think it was "Drip Too Hard," "Don't Stand Too Close." Uh, yeah, 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 that's the one. <laughs> got you. Say less. Okay. Uh, Favorite place you've ever traveled to? Right now, Chicago. No, 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 no. I lied. San Diego, off real. I don't even know why I said it. I mean, Chicago. Now, that's my hometown now. You talking about my hometown city, San Diego. Man, I'm telling you, I came <laughs> to San Diego last December. I had my best friend. He's a, he was in the Navy out there. He was stationed in uh, San okay. Diego. 
So okay. I, I went out there to visit him, uh, and his son is my youngest godchild. So I came out there to kick it with my youngest godchild. And okay. man, I'm saying San Diego was so peaceful, man. It was so peaceful. Like, we went to the beach, and uh, it was so peaceful on the beach, man. I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to raise my voice. I wanted to use my inside voice outside. All right. It was. It was a so car. Beautiful. A car passed us. This sounded like a PlayStation Two was starting. I said, "Bro, wh where am I?" I love it. I love this place. I need to stay. I said, Did yeah, you go to Jack in the Box? I didn't. We ain't go. To, we ain't, I didn't. We didn't really go to too many chain restaurants. He put me on like some some stuff, some different, you know, foods that he was eating outside of like the real chain restaurants. Well, they don't have Panda Express out here in Connecticut. We got it back in Texas. So we went to Panda Express. I needed that in my oh, life. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I had it in such in such a little time. I need that, but not nah, San Diego is definitely my my retirement spot. For sure. Mm. Off oh, real. But, San, no, but Chicago no. is really nice though. I I enjoy Chicago. I went last in was I, in August. Uh the company sent me for NABJ. That was a really good time. You I was there? Was you there for NABJ? I was. I was too. Ah man. Yeah. Yeah, I, dog. I was there, man. It was a good time. Absolutely. It was right there on Michigan Avenue. Now the mm -hmm. reason why I know because um I had a couple of people, a couple of friends that went to it. Uh, that's different reporters in different spots. Um, one of my boys went, Travis Hicks. He's mm -hmm. out there in Detroit. He went out there for NABJ. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I know some other reporters that did too. I know next year it's in Cleveland. So you best believe we got to link up when it's in Cleveland now. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm trying to tell you. So, but yes, I went out there. You can you believe Trump came out there with that nonsense? That was wild. <laughs> that was wild. I was working during during when he was speaking. I was working the booth, so I didn't even right. get to see. But when I walked in that day, because that was my first NABJ, so I just wanted to make sure I was I always. I know uh, Doctor Lee said it on Drumline. You know, if you're on time, you're late. If you're early, you're on time. Right. So I I was supposed to be there. I think at one, but I was right. there at like. Eight o'clock. Uh, my shift started at one, but I was there at eight because it was my first one. I just wanted to get acclimated with the area. And when I right. walked in, I thought that that was the convention. Like all the people that were standing waiting to get in to where he was speaking, I thought that was a convention. So I'm like, oh, that's that's what we meeting at. No, okay. they for Trump. And so I was like, all right. So I ended up going back to the convention and stuff like that. And I watched a little bit of it while I was uh at the booth, but I yeah. more so heard more talk from people once they left. About everything he said, and yeah, that was that was wild. But that was wild, bro. That was wild. Okay, wild. so Chicago. Uh, before I get to the next favorite, Chicago is where I was born, but San okay. Diego is where I was raised. That's wild. So, so yeah, so I definitely was raised in San Diego. My dad was also in the Navy for a couple terms. Okay. Um, and uh, my mom and my mother and father, they were both born in Chicago, so I have ties to both of those cities very mm -hmm. well. Um, so yeah, I love both of those cities to the core. Now. I'm a sports person. You a sports person. So here we go. Favorite sport you like to watch on TV? Favorite sport you like to attend in person? Could be the same sport. Mm, on TV, football. Football, yeah. In person, right now, and, and, it's, and that might be a little, might be, that might be an argument <laughs> out of, because hockey was really good. Have you been to a hockey game? I have. I've been to the Nashville Predators. Uh, that was great. It's really fun to watch. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. Football games to me are not that exciting, like, unless it's a really close game. Right. If it's not close. Oh, it's a wrap. You you might go to sleep in the stadium. I'm not lying. You just might. Because they got you just might. person breaks. They, and then if they run it, they trying to run the clock out. It's going to take forever. And it just seems like they're getting two yards to carry. You're bored. You about to go to sleep at that point. So, but <laughs> it's way it's way more entertaining if you watch the football on TV. If you ask me, but right. in person though, is a different ball game, man, because it's so fast. fighting and everything. I love it. Man. And so I, I'm gonna say hockey. I'm gonna go with hockey because it's really it's really entertaining. I'm not gonna lie to you. I went to my first hockey game when I first moved out here. The Dallas Stars played the Islanders in New Jersey, and uh, we had a young woman on our on our department who was an Islanders fan. It was myself. And another friend of mine who was from like the DFW Metro play, we Stars fans, so we all went to the game. And that was my first hockey game, man. I had a blast. It was a good time. It was a good okay, time. Okay, I like that. Now, last of the favorites, and that is favorite restaurant you like to eat at? Out here or in general? 
Oh, no. Uh, well, give me both. Could be in, in general and also in Bristol. Okay, cool. Out here, um, Texas Day Brazil. It's this place called Texas Day Brazil, and it's this other place called um, – ooh, I'm forgetting and I'm blanking on it. But for sure, Texas Day Brazil. Texas, I don't know if you had that, but it's a steakhouse. You like you turn the card like red and green. I've been into a steakhouse before like that. Yes, man. And I'm talking about they bring you all type of stuff: chicken, bacon wrapped chicken, mm -hmm. and filet mignon, just different types of steaks and chicken. And they keep it coming if you don't flip that card over. I'm it's talking about green. Keeping it coming. <laughs> sir, do you want, sir? Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Put it on my plate. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, boss. Yeah, Texas, that Brazil is definitely that one out here for me. Um, okay. Back home, or just, I'm going to say Houston, uh, it's this place called Hotel Zaza, and it's a restaurant inside of it called The Monarch. It's not called The Monarch, it's called The Dragonfly, because they have one in Dallas and one in Houston. But, man, they got this, uh, I think it's a, a honey, honey glazed chicken breast that's on, like, a bed of bacon-infused mashed potatoes, and I think you can get, like, asparagus with it. <sighs> Something serious. So. I'm telling you, it's something serious, man. Mm, it's okay. Serious. Them two, for sure. I'm trying to think about that other restaurant out here. Uh, hold on, I got to check that out real quick. Okay, that's okay. It'll come back to you, baby. Now, okay, I got it. Now, uh, the next question has to do with your day-to-day. -day. Now, obviously, reading your title as digital uh, video content associate mm -hmm. um, for ESPN, Obviously, working on the weekends, you're probably working on a, a bevy of different videos that contain sports. But talk to me about your day to day and when does it start? When does it end? And what do you go through uh, the entire day as far as work goes? Yeah. So uh, we transition every quarter from days to nights. Uh, I'm currently on nights. So a day shift is, a, is an eight to five shift. Night shift is a five to two in the morning shift. So when you're working on days, I mean, it's it's easy to give you an example during football season because it's the busiest time. So on days, say we say we coming off Monday, coming off of a, a weekend full of football. Um, you got get up. So I work on get, I work on all the studio shows. So I get up first take Pat McAfee show, mm -hmm. uh, it's a football podcast, NFL live. Oh, uh, I think that's about it during the day. But what I would do is. Uh, I take all the analysis that they accumulate about the games, and I will pull. Say they were talking. Say Stephen A was talking about the Cowboys for at least fifteen minutes. I'll condense that down to like two minutes or so. Uh, create a headline and caption from what he said, and then I'll post that to the website and on the app. So that's what I'll do for each show. Um, fantasy football podcast as well. So what they'll talk about different players and their um, fantasy value that week and, and going into the next week. And so I clip. I get an in and out point of, you know, when they're talking about that player, send it to our team, and we are all tackled that because we'll do it at least like 25 a day. And so on top mm -hmm. of working on the studio shows as well. Now we got now this is a peculiar time of the year because we got NFL, we got college football, we got MLB playoffs, we got NHL uh preseason, we got NBA preseason, we got WNBA finals going on like conference finals and finals going on right now too so some games run into the day uh so sometimes we might have um a, a playoff baseball game during during the day because that's how postseason baseball is it's kind of weird timing so you know you might have to finish doing studio shows and go straight into doing a game so games are usually wow. with night sides so i would say a night shift say a college football saturday i would probably be producing at least seven to eight, maybe 10 games, depending on, you know, how the schedule look and how many people we have on staff. But I'll be producing sure. like 10 games at a time. So sometimes a game, a couple of games might run into each other. You might have five games going on at the same time, but it all depends on priority. So say I'm doing the Alabama game, but I'm also doing a Southern Miss game, and they both won on a winning field goal. My priority is Alabama first. I'm going to do sure. Alabama then I'm going to get to Southern Miss. But either way, it goes. it's all about priority and just making sure you can multitask and being mindful about, you know, everything that's going on because you got to be just – I think the biggest thing for me, and I tell all of my new hires this as well, it's all about organization and structure. It don't matter how difficult or how much chaos uh, is in your way. If you're organized and you're structured, 
you're going to get through it. I, I swear you are. I'm a very organized person. So I got all my links set up how I want them to set up. I understand how they set up. I, I got it all worked out. So when it's time for when the pressure is high, all I got to do is execute. Just execute. Right. Don't, think right. too, don't think too hard about it because you are already organized. It's organized. Right. It's right. The right places. Just do what you need to do. Everything is going to be okay. Like yes, yesterday, I had a lot going on with my NFL game. Boom. But I was very organized, calm under pressure. Like I said before, I'm a man of faith. So before I even go into work, I know before I go into work, I always pray that I'm calm under pressure. I communicate with my coworkers efficiently and effectively to make sure everything is ran smooth. If you believe that, that's what's going to happen. And yeah, I, I love that. It's like, I believe that, but it's also, someone asked me last year, what brings your confidence? Like, you know, what brings the confidence out of you at work? I mm -hmm. said, the fact that one, my supervisors and those who schedule, you know, who gets what games, they have the immense trust in me that I can handle the biggest games of the night. I produced the finals. I produced the WNBA finals, NBA finals. I've done the Super Bowl. Okay. I've done, All right. uh, yeah, I've done any finals you can think of. I've worked on it, but they trust me. And that instills a confidence in me that they trust me. And then two, since I've been through those situations, I've been through those high stake moments and I've succeeded that I've proved to myself that I am who I say I am. My confidence is on another level. So when you go into that building, you already got confidence in yourself that you could do it again. You've done it before. And I've and I prayed. So I got my own confidence. <laughs> then I got and I got and I got God got confidence. In. Hey. So I'm gonna succeed every time we walk into the building. I don't even know where I where we was going with this question on no my at this point. I really just preach. <laughs> But yeah, man, that, that's 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 what we do on a on a daily and nightly basis, though, man. A lot of production, a lot of production, a lot of making sure you know fans are equipped with the highlights and the analysis and the breaking news. If you're not watching it live uh, on television, mm -hmm. like I was, matter of fact, the Sunday that uh, Tyreek Hill was arrested before the game, I was yeah. I, I broke that and wrote that on ESPN website and on our app. Like once Adam Schefter broke it on TV, boom. I get I get Adam Chef to get his take off the of TV, but I write a headline and caption. Boom, we send that to the website now. You guys get the notification on y'all phones. And like breaking news. Oh, breaking okay. News, you gotta come, you gotta really be on top of it. So I, I'm glad that I've been in those situations a lot. So now they, I mean they know they can count on me for when breaking news happened. Then hey, I can get this out to the public, I can get this out to the masses as quick as possible. Uh almost as quick as Adam talking on TV himself. <laughs> so yeah. I love it. I love it. No, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. I am on here with David Butler, digital video content associate for ESPN. David, we're going to take a short break. It's about five minutes, and we're going to come back and do part two of this thing, man. I'm looking yeah, forward cool. to it. Plus, I got an interactive game for you called This or That coming up real soon. But we're going to take a short break. I'll be back with you in about five minutes. Go cool beans. Yes, sir. All right, welcome back to the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. I'm with my man, David Butler, again of ESPN. We were just talking about his day-to-day, -day, which is a very exciting day-to-day -day process that he has. Um, he just talked about also Tyreek Hill and that situation and being able to not only get that story out to the web, that was just crazy in general, what we was watching on TV and what Adam Schefter was breaking down. But it's a great segue from talking about his day-to-day -to, -day to talking about now mental health. Mm. mental health and work-life balance. Now, you know, David, a lot in our industry uh, uses words like um, burnt out, uh, mm. overworked, underpaid, right? And I totally understand that. A lot of my colleagues that's in the journalism field, they decided to go and pursue other, other avenues, right? Mm. Talk to me about your mental health. How do you keep it strong? And talk to me also about your work-life balance, right? Because, you know, we're, we're sports and sports is nights and weekends. And a lot of people, like you said, today is your Wednesday. A lot of people don't have Mondays off to go out and chill, <laughs> you know what I mean? And do that. So talk to me about how you keep your mental health strong and what your work life balance process is. All right. Um, I would say 90% of the things we go through in life is mental. 10% is physical. I always say that it, it's, it was a mindset when I moved out here, that I understood that I didn't come out here to play. You know, you don't just up and say, I'm going to move to Connecticut. Who's doing that? You're not coming right. out here to, to, to mess around 
with you know your career i'm coming out here to build my career to it you know so it can elevate in my life so that has always been uh who i who i am i think uh, a lot of the times that my my career probably does get probably more of myself than probably you know the extracurriculars of life probably does as well that that work life balance is it's it's difficult it's really difficult in this industry it's really difficult in the sports industry as well because like, we're like, we not we not you know we never off on the weekends or socially i think the thing for me is so I, it depends on the shift so when i'm on day shift uh, my social life opens up a lot more because I'm off at regular times as everybody else will be off. Night shifts sure. are a little bit more different because I'm working when everybody else is off. So it just really depends. I I, I enjoy the the shift because I'm such a person who hates being stagnant. I hate feeling stagnant. And it's not to say when I'm on days, I feel stagnant. But when I'm on nights, I feel a little bit more like I'm getting a lot more done. And because a lot of people was watch, are, are watching what I'm doing at that time. So like I said, if I'm doing the finals, like I did game, I produced when I produced game five of the NBA finals, when the Nuggets won, I know for a fact it was hundreds of thousands of people looking at my work that night. And, and I really appreciate that. So that that really plays a part into, I think, my my mental state as far as like how hard I work, because I've always been a hard worker. Um, sure. my, pops, my pops always told me, man, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And that, that's been something for me that I've always instilled in my life. I've instilled in my career. Uh, I love it. So it it, it just, you got to try to find it. It's, it's really, it's not that easy, to be honest with you. It's not easy to find a, that good balance between uh, work and life, to be honest with you, because especially if you're working in sports and you're a sports fan already, so mm -hmm. sometimes you, you find yourself, you know, doing stuff, that you already be doing at work just on your free time because that's what you would do anyways. But I think it's like a, it's a blessing as well though. People always ask me, Oh, why you like working nights? And is that not long hours? I'm like, I would be doing the same thing for free anyways. I was going to watch the game anyways. <laughs> so, so it just so happens. I get paid to do it. I get paid to do it. And I thank the Lord for that because I would be doing it for free anyways. So Absolutely. it just depends uh, I think it on your mindset, I, I, the majority of the time, um, but also you really got to try to find those windows to pull back and, and really like focus on life outside of your job, focus on life outside of sports. Uh, so sometimes you can find somebody might be calling me, Dave, you watching the games? No, sir. No, I'm not watching the game. Matter of fact. <laughs> So it depends. Sometimes I just make myself, bro. Right, now let's put on a movie. I like, excuse me. I'm a big anime fan. Let's put some anime on. Let's watch some shows. You know, I like to cook. Let's cook real quick. Let's do something outside of that. Um, I am a part of ESPN Digital's culture and retention committee. And so I it was an idea that I implemented in our department about like different teams need to go out and do uh events outside of sports that doesn't have nothing to do with sports and I was, glad to, and I was glad that one of my supervisors he took me up on that idea and he started having cooking like cooking classes at his house with him and his wife with he and his wife and i thought that was really good that was good team bonding that was good because we didn't i mean we sports people eventually sports is gonna come up in conversation and that's okay but it wasn't about like the event wasn't about sports and that was much right. needed because you know you just got to get away from that sometimes because we so consumed with it on i agree in, in a nightly basis so it's about intention i think that that's where i'm trying to get to it's about intention and being intentional with finding those windows and finding those ways to really like decompress and get some time off like i, I just went on my first solo uh vacation this summer i took myself to disney world and I stayed for like a week. And man, I'm talking about it. I enjoyed myself. I probably, I barely looked at my phone. I don't even think I brought my laptop. <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> yeah. And so, just to, how we, was it? How I, was that vacation? I was great. I had a blast. That okay. was my first solo vacation, man. I enjoyed myself so much, man. Just, just decompressing, getting away from sports and being, being a big kid. I mean, I'm at Disney World. So I'm just being a big kid the whole week. Not trying to impress nobody, man. I right. was being myself and I really enjoyed that. So it's like being, it's taking that time to be intentional about yourself. That's the biggest thing. Cause it's like, it's almost inevitable that you, if you're a hard worker, 
uh, you're gonna get caught up in it because you gonna that's you want to succeed in life. I'm right, that's what you want to do. You know, I get caught up in in working so hard or trying to succeed. I I've had people tell me plenty of times, Dave, you don't never stop and smell the roses. You don't never do that. Like why you don't never stop and appreciate what you just did or whatever the case may be. So you're always thinking about the next. What's that's why. Next? What's next? That that that's was why. that was good. And I'm so glad that I accomplished that. I was working on it and I accomplished that. Like earlier this year, man, this year, like the first two quarters of the year, I was doing numbers. I had, I made Forbes BLK, uh, I think in March. Uh, I was chosen to go to NABJ on behalf of the company earlier this year as well. So it was a lot that was happening that I had been working. I finished my portfolio that I did by myself from scratch. I didn't pay nobody to create the website. I created it from front to back. And it took me the whole month of February to finish it. But that was a goal. Of, that was just an internal goal of mine to get there. Sure. And so I got that done. So it was a lot that I did. And that Forbes thing was really big for me. Once I once I accomplished that, I was like, I was happy about it for about like a week. I'm still happy about it, but I was like, yeah, that was really good. But then the next week I was like, all right. What's next? Like, how can What's I make this work for me? And see, a lot of people, some people, some people understand it, some people don't. Um, like I said, I don't like to be stagnant. So I can get caught up in, you know, probably working a little bit too much or working a little bit too hard. But mm -hmm. I've always been like that, like in college, and a lot of kids gotta understand, especially in our industry, it's like you're gonna have to sacrifice. You gotta sacrifice So You gotta sacrifice going out, you gotta sacrifice whatever the case may be to get to where you yeah. want to life. I think. I think that's where my mindset. I'm I'm still such a a hungry and a hungry mindset um, mm -hmm. that I will I find myself really deep in a hole. I've been working for you know X amount of days, even on my off days, I'm doing stuff stuff outside, right. you know different stuff outside of ESPN, whatever the case may be. Um, because I just I just want to succeed, man. I just want to succeed, and I'm at that age. I, my pops told me he was like, son, if you if you grind. You know, through your twenties, through your thirties, and you touch forty, you you probably could retire. You know, you probably you have a whole different lifestyle. He he always told me, you know, son. Obviously, I want you to be better than me. As a, you know, his father told him he wanted him to be better than him. So that's sure. what I mindset, just to continue to up that and up up the bar. Like I'm in competition with me at the end of the day, and I think that's the hardest competition. And ain't nobody else gonna be a harder competition than I am to myself because once no I question. see my my it's like a, it's two half of me. It's one half he he happy about succeeding. The other half it's like all right, cool. Next, <laughs> what's up? Like that that was all right, and you know you did that. And I'm proud of you doing that. But like, what's next though? We're not gonna sit down and let that be the only thing that you succeed in, is it? And so. It's a battle with myself, to be honest with you, to try to find that balance. Sometimes I got to force myself. Like, after someone told me, Dave, you don't really look at it and smell the roses, I had to force myself uh, to really sit down and sometimes appreciate the stuff that I do, man. I think, I know I, it was a time, I think when I first got here, that I was desensitized, I think, to uh, my success, because I have been doing like a lot of big things and a lot of things that I know, you know, my counterparts may not be doing. And I'm not saying people at ESPN, I'm just saying, you know, people around my age group may not be doing. And I it, like everything that I do is different. It's not, it's, you can't, it's not really too many people that you and me be like, yeah, I know him. He worked for ESPN. I'm like a lot of people's only person they know that work for ESPN. So right. I think desensitized to like just doing big things because it was like a consistent base. It, was, it became a norm for me. But then I had to understand how grateful that is to be able to do that. Sometimes you got to see that. It. Now that was big. And mm -hmm. so some, now I be trying to find that balance and stuff like that when I do accomplish something that's pretty abnormal that I really sit back and be like, nah, like you did a good job. Like at least go get you a glass of wine or something, something like that. Just on a little, a little appreciation to it. And then after that, I'm not going to lie to you. After I do that, I'm back on it, though. <laughs> I, might, I might do a little, a little hoorah. One, two, all right now, what's next? What we got going on? Like, I got a lot of stuff brewing. I told some people at ESPN before, I said, bro, if y'all ever, if I ever tell y'all that I don't have nothing going, y'all either need to check on me, mm -hmm. make sure I'm okay, because I okay. got something going. I just, we got to have it. You got to have it. So, it's a balance. It's a balance about being intentional about yourself and your own mental state. And Absolutely. 
to keep that within yourself. Like I under like I know I know who I am though, and I'm true. You got you can't lie to yourself either. If you know you're a workaholic and you know you like to work hard, be truthful about yourself. But you also gotta forcefully give yourself time to get away. That's that's all about being intentional with yourself. I know I work hard. I know I'm I got X, Y, and Z. But I got to try to, like, pull myself and be like, all right, look, just give yourself a couple days, then one or two, and then you can get back to it. That vacation was much needed. It was crazy much because that was my third state that month. I was around mm. so many people. I had, I started the month in Chicago, left Chicago, got back here, I think, for a week, went to New York. Went to New York, got back, was here for a week, went to Florida. By the time I got to Florida, that solo trip was much needed because I was around so many people. And right. giving, I was giving, you know, and think about who, who I am is I, I always believe in being a cheerful giver, man. Just like you said earlier, paying it forward. So I was giving so much of myself. I just needed some time for me. And then I feel once, that. once I got back to work, I was good to go. I was good to go. I so feel that. Not an intention, I think. I love that. I really do. Um, And, and this is a lot to dissect there, but I'm going to dissect just a few. Mm -hmm. I feel like the moment that we run out of that hunger, uh, out of that desire to want to keep improving and keep going up, we got to find something else to do. Yeah. Uh, this is this is something where you got to stay hungry. You got to be motivated. You got to love what you're doing because the money is not going to be all there right. when you step into it, right? And this is an industry where you got to have more love than what you expect the money. And that's mm -hmm. why a lot of people kind of dive out because you really see the ones that's the real ones, the day ones. Mm -hmm. And then you see people that got to go to a different profession, got to go a different avenue. Yeah. Oh, so, uh, I love that hunger. And you don't lose that, man. Whatever yeah. you do, don't lose that excitement, that hunger to wake up every day and do what you love to do and keep being an advocate for people and not yeah. just for of people, but especially our people. Because yeah. I want to go back to something we kind of talked about earlier. Uh, before I get into this next question, and that is I have covered section championships, state championships. I've been on front page of new stuff. It's been amazing. I've had I've wrote over 500, 600 articles being here. However, when I go to these state championships, David, um, you don't see a whole lot of us. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of us in chairs. You don't see a whole lot of us taking photos. You don't see a whole lot of us writing. You definitely don't see any black women, uh, right. or, or women of any ethnicity, mm -hmm. and that's something that I also wanted to create a platform because of this podcast. Because I put a lot of women on here too, to be able to give a voice to the voice list because you don't see a lot of women in our job mm -hmm. and in journalism. Period, especially in hierarchy positions, and we got to advocate for that more. We got to mm -hmm. advocate for our own, as far as our brothers, as in us, and we got to advocate for our ladies our queen, mm -hmm. to be able to get into positions of just not just power, but just in the sports genre. Because to me, if we can get both genders on point and it can be equated on the same level, it only grows our business even more. It makes right. us better. Um, but again, great segue because I want to get your opinion on advice. What mm -hmm. is some advice you would tell someone, whether it's a intern, postgraduate or somebody that might be in the business like us for a few years, mm -hmm. what would you tell them as far as advice goes on joining uh, the sports industry? I would say it's not about who you know. It's about who knows you. I think the biggest thing, the the biggest mis misconception about that is, you know, people can be like, oh, I met Stephen. Like, I could be telling my cousin I met Stephen A., man, we had a good talk, da 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 if Stephen A going to that office and say, hey, I met David but I really think he'll be an asset to this, that, and the third, it's a different ball game. It's about mm -hmm. who, it's about who knows what you bring to the table. This is what I tell everybody that comes to me, you know, for advice and stuff. Because what you got to understand is if they know who you are, what you bring to the table, if you build that relationship, building relationships go a long way. Build, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, that's that's probably one of the biggest things because a lot of people get jobs because it ain't because of people who know them. And they yep. and like, because you, know, you can always learn a different position, but if they know your work ethic, they know who you are as a person, they're going to put you in that hat. They're going to put you in that hat for any type of They can of be an advocate for you. 
Every it's all important. time. That's what you need. You need people that's going to bring your name up in rooms you haven't even stepped in yet. That's what yep. you need, though, in order for you to succeed in this industry. It's like your hard work and your dedication and your work has to speak for yourself. And sometimes you're going to, because no one is going to advocate for you like you're going to advocate for yourself. No one's going right. to do that. And so, right. so people won't know who you are until, you know, boom, you put it in front of them or you build that relationship with somebody. And then once you get that person to understand who you are, what you bring, it's a different ball game because you don't know who they may know. And that's that's really how I got to ESPN in the first place. Because when I was an intern, I had a, a recruiter in each time zone of the U.S. Every time I did something innovative at ABC 13, bro, I shot it to mm -hmm. Bam, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is new. Bam, this is what I've added to my portfolio, uh, right. uh, my resume. And this is what I've added. I had a Prezi. So on my on my resume, I had a Prezi uh, presentation that was basically my resume in interactive form. So I'm right. like, damn, this is what I've added to my Prezi. I'm sending it to them. I'm on calls with them. Just and it's and it, it don't even have to be about work. We just talking about regular stuff. Just building that good relationship. And so when it was time for me to to apply, they got me. They know me. They know what he brings to the table. They know what he yep. do. Damn. Yep. This is David, da, 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 da. and that's how I got to ESPN. To be honest with you, because it was I sent it to one of my recruiters. Matter of fact, his name is Jeff Tassett. Jeff sent it to somebody at ESPN, and they got the ball rolling right. And the rest was history. The rest was history. It's about who knows you, what you bring to the table. At the end of the day, uh, and confidence, bro, confidence in yourself and, and the work that you've put in. It was a it was a saying that I made up in college. I might need to get it copyright. Uh, is be proud of the product that you produce. I call it three P's. I was I was pushing P before Gunner said it. I had been pushing it, you know. <laughs> I had been pushing it. Be proud of the product that you produce at the end of the day, man. Okay. Because if, you, if you're not proud of it, you're not gonna put it out. And if you're not proud of it, you're not gonna push it. And you're gonna you're gonna push your content if you really feel like it's good content. If you feel like it's good work, you're gonna push that content out. And so oh, without question, you definitely gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, that, that's the biggest thing for me. Be confident in yourself, be confident in the work that you put into the craft already. Mm -hmm. and, and make sure you build those relationships so people know who you are. It's cool to know them, but if they know you, it can change the whole uh, you know, ball game of your whole career, man. I love that. I do, I do. That's great advice, man. <laughs> not about just what you have, it's not about just who you know, but it's what you can bring to the table as well. Uh, no question about it. Now it's great to have those things, but this is a, a reason why you gotta build uh however you want to build your platform, your brand, or however you want to build your through your connections. With me, I love doing it through podcasting. I hey, I cold emailed you. That's what I do with a lot of people. I cold email them, I let them know what it is. I thought, hey. Like you said, they respond, they won't respond. It's just like job applications. Mm -hmm. You get a whole lot more no's being in this business, but all you need is one yes. And once you get your yes, you step right through the door and you show them why they made the right decision in selecting you. And that's mm -hmm. the mindset that I have. And I've taken it with me for the past six years since mm -hmm. I've been in this industry. And I'm not going to definitely not going to stop anytime soon. Um, we've reached the podcast episode now time of this or that is the interactive game that i have for you so you i throw two things at you okay you get to choose one or the other this or that now dave are you with me i got you all right here we go this we've been vibing all episode dave <laughs> okay this first question pivotal now all right. popeyes <laughs> or kfc popeyes okay all right you the homie all yeah, right i'm real, real. yeah all right, you know what it is. Okay, here we go. Chicken wing flavors. You said you like to do it. So I'm going to give you two. Barbecue or lemon pepper? Lemon pepper. You like your wings wet or dry? Mm, wet. You sure? Yeah. I know I know a lot of people like dry. I don't mind mine's wet. It, it, the chicken going to taste the same to me. It's the same, mm -hmm. with, the, it's the same with the drum of flats. I don't care. It's, okay. It's going to taste the same to me. That was my next question. I'm glad you brought it <laughs> up. Drums or flats? Yeah, they're both of them. B O F F U M. <laughs> yeah. 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 Both of them. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold on. Which one is 51%? Which one's 49%? Uh, 
out of the drum was flat. Mm -hmm. The drum, the drum, that's 51. Okay, here we go. Do you like bone in or boneless? Bone in, off rip. I never bone boneless is a nugget. Okay, see that everybody talking about that's a nugget. Listen, I, I'm gonna say both them too. B O F F U M, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> I want, I want them. I want them. That's what I, it don't matter. As long as they got that meat, it's all right with me. That's all it is. Okay, here we go. Next four have to do with concerts you rather attend. So here we go. Which Concert? Would you rather go to J Cole or Big Sean? J Cole. Okay. Which concert would you rather go to, Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Ooh, Drizzy. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, I think Drizzy. About a Drizzy concert. Mm hmm. Yeah, but okay. I, not to say now, you know, obviously K Dot obliterated Drizzy, but at the end of the day. That's still Drizzy, though. Drizzy is a hit maker. It is what it is. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, they both good now. They both good. I mean, listen, you choose in between Megan Good and Holly Berry. Which one? It don't matter. You can't go wrong with either one. It's a W. <laughs> it's a win-win. That's a win-win. So yeah. uh, I'm just saying, okay? It ain't like it ain't like it's Rosie O'Donnell and uh, Roseanne. It ain't yeah. that. <laughs> it ain't that. Let's yeah. move on. Uh, which concert would you rather go to? Paul Wall or Slim Thug? Slim Thug, for sure. Okay, okay. Which concert would you rather go see? Would you rather go see Eminem or Scarface? I don't even listen to that. I'd probably, probably say Eminem just off of my own. Like, when I was younger, like I was, I definitely was rocking it with Eminem when he was with, you know, Dre, G-Unit, and 50 Cent and them boys, man, and Okay. Then that, that little eight mile, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be rabbit. <laughs> Be rabbit. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> all right, mom spaghetti. All that's all we gotta say. Uh, that's right. No okay. doubt. You know, you know there's a restaurant out there called Mom Spaghetti. Or it. it's in Detroit. It's in it's in Detroit. That's hard. That's hard. I didn't know that. Yep, yep. Eminem it's Eminem spot. Eminem spot yeah. is called Mom Spaghetti. spaghetti. That's tough. Mm-hmm. So I said the next time I'm in Detroit, I gotta pull up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to definitely get some for sure. I'm, I might walk in and start rapping. He's wing. Oh, <laughs> I'm in on a smutter already. Mom's forget it. He's nervous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. You a Dallas Cowboy fan, so I'm gonna ask you, All which right. cowboy would you rather go with? Would you rather go with Emmett Smith or Ezekiel Elliott? You gotta go with ooh you. It's a default. It's a default to go with Emmy because Emmy is the all-time leading rusher. So it's it's crazy not to go in and we talk about just stats, you know, and we're talking about numbers, uh, and great and you know, greatness. Zeke ain't reached that level of great. I ain't even touched that level of greatness so far. Okay. But if we're gonna go rookie year Zeke, that like that rookie year to uh, <laughs> 2020, that boy Zeke was something different. He but was different. He was. Auto, now you gotta go with Emmy. That's crazy not to go with Emmy. Okay. Which 88 are you gonna roll with? There's mm. Brian CD Lamb or Michael Irvin. Mm-hmm. CD Lambski. Oh, Michael Irvin. That's tough. Cause none of them touching Michael Irvin, though. You don't none of them got three, none of them got three Super Bowls. So they well, don't. They you don't. Know, that Dez arrow. That Dez era was my, I think that was a core era for me because that, that was when I was young and I was, you know, so that's a different type of feeling when you talk about Dez, that you talk about that X, that's a different type of cause I still, he caught that ball. And then that's something that I will stand on. Oh, no, man, it. don't you go back to that no, play. If I had game, 20 man. toes, I'd stand on 20 <laughs> toes. He caught that ball. I'm telling you, he caught, he made a football move for the pylon. And, DB, uh, come on now. DB, come on He caught come on he now. the ball. Don't get it. Don't. All right. We ain't going to get started on that. But CD, CD, ski. that's my guy too, though. That's a tough one. But it's like they, X, I mean, X and, and CD animals, different breeds, but none of they don't got the accolades that, that Mike have. So it's hard not to go with Mike, though, with that. I go learn. Okay. The issue with that, yeah. Okay, here we go. Do you like desserts? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna throw four brands at you, or four different type of desserts. I should say you gotta eliminate one of these that you'll never eat again. Are you with me? Let's do it. All right, here we go. First one is ice cream. 
Okay. Second one is cookies. There's any type of cook. Okay. The third one is cake. There's any type of cake. Mm. The last one is candy. Any type of candy. Which one are you getting rid of that you'll never eat again? Mm, ice cream could probably mm, ice cream cookies cake candy. I might go candy to be honest with you. Okay, I okay. Eat, I don't even eat candy as much no more because it's like during a hot day, I have some ice cream gonna hit a good, right. a good cookie in the winter time. It's about to be. It's next month. By the time next month, Roller Brown's about to be cold. It's that time of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, a matter of fact, I'm making a s'mores dip probably this month. Matter of fact, I ain't even gonna lie to you. That's okay. That. Yeah, we got And then what was the cake? Oh, none bunk cake got it for me, man. That lemon cake, something crazy. Ooh, you ain't said nothing but a word. I'm with the red velvet, though. The man, red God, velvet that's, on that's, that's out of two. <laughs> yeah, none bunk something serious, man, for real. Hey, listen, we talking about NBC and we ain't talking to champ. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking nah, about? Okay. <laughs> MVP like, nah. means nothing but cake. That's what <laughs> that means. <laughs> nah, real serious. Okay. All right, here we go. Do you like potato chips? Yeah. Same format. I'm mm -hmm. gonna name four brands. You gotta get rid of one of these brands, you'll never eat again. And one of the brands is not Cheetos. We ain't gonna okay. put Cheetos up in there. So here we go. First brand is Doritos. Mm -hmm. The second brand is Ruffles. Mm -hmm. The third brand is Pringles. Mm. The last one is Lay's. Which one you getting rid of that you'll never eat again? Ruffles can go for sure. <laughs> oh hell no! No, you did not just say yeah. Ruffles. Ruffles can oh, go. My. Ruffles is good, but I can't. I can't go against the other ones. I ain't even gonna. I for sure ain't going against Doritos. What was the I third? Feel, I feel you. I feel you on Doritos, but I would have got rid of the Lay's. Lay's got different. Did, did the flavors and Lay's go crazy too though? Hold on, okay, hold on. Do you like salt and vinegar? Salt and vinegar chips go crazy. The Lay's salt and vinegar chips go crazy, do they not? I now granted, I don't mm -hmm. eat chips like that no more. But yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you, you asking wrong first because I barely even eat chips nowadays. I'm telling my diet. I feel you, but nowadays. you said you can rid of the rubble. The, the sour cream and cheddar is the best chip ever made. How is it the uh, I like the uh I guess it's that that cheddar one that Ruffles got. This crazy work. I'm talking about crazy work. Yes. Yeah. I, I but I also think I didn't I didn't grow up on eating a lot of ruffles though. That probably played a part in, in it as well. I grew up on eating more. I feel you on that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Do you think that Whataburger is overrated? No, sir. I'm from Texas. I'm not gonna ever disrespect Whataburger. You ain't, <laughs> ain't, ain't gonna ever hear me disrespect Whataburger. That's not gonna happen. It's not happen. Yeah. Nah, that's just like a Californian disrespecting in and out. It's not happening. Well, let me let me tell you something. Hold on now, let me tell you something. Oh well, yeah, the in and out the in and out burger is all right. Whataburger is okay too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but the shakes from In and Out, they beat Whataburgers all day. I can see that. I can see that. I, I don't get shakes at Whataburger, so I can see that though. Yeah, they, they they beat them all day long. The shakes is why you go to the In and Out. The the Whataburger wasn't that bad. Last time I went to Houston, I got a Whataburger for mm -hmm. the first time. Mm -hmm. That thing was hit. It was yeah. hitting. It was yeah, hitting. Probably. But but y'all got too many toes out there for me. <laughs> got too many eight. toes out there. Yeah, because it's like five, it's like five, six, seven, eight lane, and then you're gonna you're gonna mess around. If you make if you make a wrong turn on the freeway, you might as well Lord, go ahead and go back home, buddy. <laughs> Lord, now let me tell you, I was on the free, I was on the freeway, yo. I was like, okay, this lane said that I can get to my destination a lot quicker. I went over to that left lane. And yeah. that left took a picture of my tag and oh, <laughs> hit me for the fine. Rapidly. I was like, oh, Lord. Yeah, it's rough for you. I was like, Lord, have mercy. These damn toes and these little picture things. Yeah. That's what it was, okay? I am going to get his. <laughs> okay, here we, here we go. This next question that I have for you, I ask all, all the people that's in sports or journalism like myself, if mm -hmm. you wasn't working at ESPN, what career path would you have gone down and chosen to do, and why? Mm, right now, or well, it success is different. If it like specifically to ESPN or specific to just our field, our field. No, 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 not it, not our field. Like, what is a profession you would have chose that's not in our field, yeah, yeah, and I'll, you would have you would have went down, and why? Probably 
some type of some type of mentoring, some type of like uh I don't know, I guess the title for it, but sometimes something in in mentoring and, and cultivating like a guidance counselor, yeah, guidance something around helping, something around helping young young people, you know, get to where they want to be in life or you know, something in that sort because that because it comes so natural to me. I guess that's never been something that I struggle with, like as far as speaking and speaking through experience, also speaking through, you know, the word and make sure I try to help this picture and, sp and speak life. I think that's what I'm trying to get it. It's never been an issue or something that's been very difficult for me to speak life into somebody else. I find it very uh, easy for me to do. And I appreciate that I can do it like, you know, so well, I, if I'm being honest with you, I can hold a conversation with a spoon if you ask me to, quite frankly. And I've learned that that's a gift. I didn't know it was a gift until somebody said it. And because I think right. somebody somebody saw me walk up to somebody or we was out somewhere and I just, you know, just ended up having a conversation with a random person that I met that night. And it seemed like I'd known them for three years. And they was like, bro, you that's like, that's a gift. Like, cause nobody, not a lot of people can do that. And you're absolutely right. So I think, you know, at, at some point, if I wasn't working in our industry, I'd probably definitely be doing somewhere I'm helping, helping others. Um I don't know. It don't matter what it is, because that's I think it's how how I was raised too. I was raised in yeah. the church. I did a lot with my with my youth church, a lot of uh community service stuff, a lot of giving back, giving my clothes, packing lunch at the uh, Dallas Food Bank. Uh, and I never really realized how much that impact impacted who I became as an adult, because now I find myself doing it now as an adult without even really thinking, because I just do it. So. I think I'd definitely be doing something where I'm helping, speaking life to somebody, just, you know, um, helping people along their way of life, for sure. I like that. I am actually going to Dallas in December. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually, it's actually going to be a baseball career fair, so I'm actually going to that. They're having the winter meetings in Dallas this year, so I will be out there uh, for a few days. Uh, mm -hmm. You, you, you got to tell me, it's my first time in Dallas. I've never been to Dallas, so you got to let me know what, what should I check out? While yeah. I'm there, for sure. Um, I definitely will hit you up for that. Uh, we're getting close to the end, DB. This is rapid fire. Okay, oh. first thing that comes to your mind, uh, I want you to just let me know what it is, okay? Right. Here we go. Burgers or tacos? Tacos. Pancakes or waffles? Oh, waffles. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh oh. pork chops or steak? Ooh, steak. Okay. Favorite alcoholic drink? Oh, um, uh, a mojito. Okay. Favorite card game? Ooh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no gonna cause some Oh no gonna cause some ruckus. <laughs> you ain't lying. You hit me with that draw four. I might just, you know, <laughs> I'm just hey, trying man. to tell you. <laughs> just trying to tell you. Okay, here we go. Favorite board game? Uh, sorry. That's mine too, actually. That's mine too. Pretty good. Favorite restaurant? Texas Day Brazil. Texas Day Brazil. Okay. If you had three songs three. that you can listen to with uh that is consistently on repeat, you just let them stay on repeat and never get tired of listening to them. What songs would they be? Uh, you rock my yeah. Is he no 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 now you rock my world? Uh uh the one with Mike and he had Chris Tucker in it. Is he rock my world? Yeah, yeah. you rock my world. Yeah, that, that's one <laughs> off rip. Uh, okay. Uh, I probably could do because I gotta throw some gospel in. I need I need never never would have made it. Yeah. Made it. Cause I need Marvel's that in my out. life. Yeah, it's I something about it. when it starts, I feel I feel the spirit every time I need that. Gotta throw some gospel in there. Oh, uh, let me see. And then Gotta throw some rap in there. That was R and B gospel. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, um, appreciate it all by Larry June. I don't know if you listen to Larry June, but I would advocate, <laughs> I advocate everybody to go listen to Larry June, man, because Larry June speak about the he think he speak about peace. He think of like peaceful, a peaceful life. Speak about mm -hmm. obviously getting money, paying attention to your goals. He think he's preach about. I mean, you know. Take your vitamins, eat your vegetables, but he, he like really make it sound cool though, for real. Though, I ain't gonna lie. So like, okay. appreciate it all. Really go like if you get a chance, go listen to appreciate it all. It's about just staying on your grind and don't getting distracted with you know worldly things and stuff that are distracting. Man, 
from getting off his path. Like, focus on what you need to focus on. You getting that bag, focus on that bag. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I definitely would take, uh, well, I definitely would listen to that for sure. Yeah. Uh, favorite sport that you like to play? Uh, football or baseball. I probably go. My love, my first love was baseball, but yeah. I'm also from Texas, and we sleep, eat, breathe, football. bleed football. That'll never change. That like football in my head is still number one, but I love baseball too. I love track because I want to. I mean, I want to stay in track, so that's yeah. Now what? Now that was my next question on rapid fire. What events did you participate in track? Yeah, I ran 100, 200, and uh, four by one. I, I long jumped before before high school. Then once I got to high school, I ain't feel like I ain't feel like getting into field events no more. But yeah, like we won state twenty seventeen. My second leg, he split a nine. My ankle leg, he split a nine. He matter of fact got drafted to the forty ers in twenty twenty one. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a, some fun facts about me. My fourth leg got drafted to the forty ers Um, uh, what's, what's his name? Then his name is Danny Gray. He went to SMU. Oh, okay. And that uh, name sounds familiar. Yeah, now nah, it a dog. I'm talking about a a dog for real. Uh, my fastest split was a ten five. Uh, and uh, I was another fun fact about me is uh, me and Shakari Richardson. We went to school together. We were good friends in high school. We won state. Okay. Same. Yeah, yeah. That's my dog. I'm always okay. to see her winning. It's always a blessing to see that for real. I love that. I love that. Now, which which sport do you like to produce? Uh, which is your favorite sport to produce? Football. I think football is giving me more opportunities. Mm, football or, or playoff? Playoff? Now, playoff? Ba playoff? NBA basketball? I'm gonna say that because it gave me more opportunities to prove to myself that I am who I say I am. It's I'm telling you, playoff basketball really bring out how oh, something different produce a game because it's so it's so it's high stake and it's like they playing at a high level and you just gotta produce the game according. Like it was a game I did, I think it was when Jimmy Butler had put like 50 something on, I think the Bucks. That was and, Milwaukee, and, yeah. And I I produced that game. And I it was the crazy thing, like how how our production is set up. I had everything. Cause it's, it's TNT, so we can't post highlights until after the game is over. That's that's in the contract. So I had everything set up, set up how I wanted everything to look on the website. Boom, I got it ready. Jimmy Butler come out in that fourth quarter. I'm talking about obliterate the, the books. So he now, did. but it's like I gotta I gotta revamp what I have ready. I also have to work with what's going on live. I also got to make sure it's ready when it, the time is still going down. As I'm doing, as I'm revamping and I'm working live to replace different stuff, the time is going down. <laughs> I got to post this stuff by the time the game is over. Sure, sure. So, like, that, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking about, like, what moments really, like, was a moment where I, I looked myself in the mirror and was like, nah, like, nah, you him. Like, you <laughs> you him for that one? Because there's not a lot of people that could do what you just did in that situation. And, sure. Uh, it gave me, yeah, playoff basketball has given me a lot of opportunities to prove to myself that I am who I say I am and, and trust, okay. trusting in God in, in situations where the pressure is high, for real. Amen to that. Now, this is my last one of the rapid fire, and that is if you had three people that you could take with you on a vacation, wherever that vacation spot would be, who would be those three people? Easy money. My big cousin, Quinn, I'm my only child, but my big cousin, he like my, he like my brother. Uh, my best and my two best friends too, uh, the Aquarius and Ty for sure. Then my that's the guys right there. That's the squad right there for sure. Where would you Where would you go? If, if a trip, uh, matter of fact, go I anywhere, anywhere. Um, I know we would Tokyo. Tokyo oh. gonna be a vibe. That's a vibe right there. Cause we all matter of fact, we all three of us we like big anime fans too. So like. I yeah. like that. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah, that now, is. DB, this is my last question to you before I let you get on up out of here, and that is, is there anything else you would like to add about yourself before we conclude? About myself, man? Um, anything in general? Yeah, I got it. I got it. Uh, I would say I would say to anybody that, you know, that's watching this episode, man, if y'all feel free 
to reach out if y'all need some guidance, if y'all need um a person that y'all can come to, to to at least try my best to help y'all get to where y'all want to be in life. Cause you know, I help as much as I can possible. I probably can't make no calls and get you hired immediately, but I can try to put you in front of somebody that can help you out as much as possible. So y'all watching Absolutely. this episode, man, if y'all you know see me on LinkedIn or whatever the case may be, don't hesitate to contact me, hit me up on LinkedIn. I get to you as quick as I can possible for sure though. I love this. I love learning about your journey, man. I love the fact that I've learned some new things about you. Love what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Love your mindset probably more than anything else because just a dope mindset to have, bro. The hey. kind of heart that you have, the kind of things that you're doing. Please keep it up, not only for us, but for the people that's coming behind you, right? Yeah. So uh, thank you again, David, for your time on my Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. Brother, we will be in touch with each other. Stay in touch, okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, man. No doubt. You take care and enjoy the rest of your Monday. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Peace. Yeah.